Om Aganati Mananda Syang Ganangana Sarakya Chaksurin Militam Yana Tajmai Sri Gurve Nuham Sri Chaitanya Manubhishtam Stapitam Yana Bhutare Sayam Rupa Kiram Yam Tarati Swaparantikam Bandeham Sri Guru Siyata Parakamanam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sham Sri Rupam Sagadatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Stam Sadevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Larita Shibishakan Vitam Sham Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutare Sri Madhi Bhakti Padanta Swami Tiramani Namaste Sarasati Devi Guravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sanyavadi Praskita Desara Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadana Sri Vasari Govakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Well, we're trying to regain our momentum after almost two months of being kicked off of Facebook since we were hacked on February 28th. Um, but the timing was pretty good. To tell you the truth, I would have had to have backed off anyway within one or two days of February 28th because we were getting really busy preparing for the Spanish Fork Festival and I would not have been able to return online to live broadcasts after the Spanish Fork Festival because the week after Spanish Fork I had to go to Vegas, spend four days down there putting up posters and signs on chain link fences and even then I would have not had been able to return to Facebook Live because we had the Vegas Festival on April 16th. And then after that, I had to go to Ogden for a couple of days to put up posters and festivals. So everything's done for Spanish Fork. We had a record crowd, perhaps as many as 18 to 20,000 people. We also had a record crowd in Las Vegas, 2,000 people. Ogden is the 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 seeds are sown for Ogden. <laughs> the advertisements are up. People are buying tickets. And the only thing that looms after Ogden in terms of festivals is the Spanish Fork Color Fest on June 11th. And because it's on our home turf, it doesn't require as much preparation as something, a field like the Las Vegas Festival. And of course, let's not forget a really nectarian weekend between Ogden as well, uh, between Ogden and Salt Lake City comes Memorial Day weekend, the 27th, 28th, and 29th of May, whereby we're going to be hosting right here in Spanish Fork, Utah, between 1,500 and 2,000 exalted Vaishnavas. They're going to come from all over the country and some even from Europe and India to be with us for the Sadhu Sang retreat. So I hope everybody gets in on that. It'll be um, I, I, the, the biggest thing from a Vaishnav cultural society, ISKCON point of view, that's ever happened in Utah. In fact, if it were to have happened in any other state, including California and New York, it would be the biggest thing there. But this is happening in Utah and not in Salt Lake City or Ogden or even Provo, but it's happening in Spanish for Utah. So at least for one weekend this year, Spanish for Utah will be the hub of all Vaishnav activities in the Western Hemisphere. So we feel so blessed and so fortunate to be able to host that. One of the best things about it is that it's all being organized by disciples of Indra Numarish. We're working with them, cooperating with them, assisting them in any way we can. But there's a difference between assisting the managers and being the manager yourself. A big difference in terms of the stress level. <laughs> we expect that although we're going to work no less hard than we normally do, because somebody else is going to get blamed for anything that goes wrong, <laughs> we're going to really enjoy ourselves <laughs> leading up to and during that weekend because the buck for once does not stop here, it stops somewhere else. We've been working closely with Indra Dumaraj's disciple Govinda Charan. He's based out of San Jose and his wife. They're amazing, amazing devotees, extremely committed, um, mind for millions and millions of details, 
um, adaptability, flexibility to make the necessary changes and adapt adaptations. Uh, they've just been an inspiration to work with on this Sadhusang retreat. Well, those are all the things that are upcoming. <clears throat> it's going to be an exciting month of May, and it's going to be an exciting month of June. And for that matter, every month, every day here is exciting. Let's revisit now. We're having some overlap from February to now, just in order to brush the dust off, refresh our memories, and regain our momentum. So you might have heard this verse before, if you've got a good long-term memory. Bahir antash chelokam srim. Bahir means inside and outside. We're living within a, in a contained, enclosed universe. It's enclosed by layers of earth, air, fire, water, mind, intelligence, and false ego. The bottom of the universe has an ocean called the Gavanak Ocean, and all the seven planetary systems are on different, different planes along the lotus flower which grew from the navel of the Lord Vishnu and atop of which sits Lord Brahma. His planet, Brahma Loka, is the highest planet within the material world, and then there are seven layers of planets below it. So inside this enclosed system of the universe, which is Antir, and then Mahish, which means outside, Pariyamis Gandita Anugrahan, Narada Muni says that he is, has the freedom to travel at will inside the universe, throughout the seven planetary systems, upper, middle, and lower, as well as outside the coverings and the layers of the universe. And how had this come about? He says, Anugrahan Mahavishnu Vigatagaja. It came about by the grace of Lord Vishnu based on his prior habit, prior and current. No one ever gives up the chanting of Hare Krishna. You begin as a neophyte, you, you start your spiritual journey by chanting, you gradually increase the quantity and quality of your chanting. The Lord becomes more and more real to you, more and more visible to you as you clean the dust off the mirror of the heart. And then when you become fully realized, the last thing you do is stop chanting. <laughs> you overflow with praise, with honor. And another reason why perfected, realized souls continue chanting is to set an example to the ones that are just embarking, starting out on their journey. Narada Muni, as a neophyte in his previous life, traveled all over the world, described himself as humble and non-envious, chanting the holy names of the Lord. He saw everywhere he went, whether it was the jungles or mountains or deserts, he saw the Lord everywhere as the Paramatma, the super soul, within each and every atom. And because of his all-pervasiveness, the Lord is one without a second, all-powerful. He is the controller of all controllers. Ishvara Parama Krishna. Satyananda He has a body full of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. The inside of his body is not different from the outside of the body. We being qualitative particles of the Lord, <clears throat> our spiritual essence is of the same nature as the Lord. We are Satyananda. We are full of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. But we're covered by matter because we're tiny. We tend to be overcome by the material energy which is not the case for the Lord. So um, we are Satchinananda, but we're not Satchinananda Vigraha. We're Satchinananda inside, but outside. <clears throat> we're covered with the temporary, flexible, changing material energy. That's not the case for the Lord. He's spirit inside and outside. There's no difference between his inside and his outside. Advaitam, achutam, anadim, anantarupam. Advaitam means there's no difference between his body, his inside, and his outside, his entirely spiritual essence. From that singular entity, there comes unlimited potencies, unlimited energies, the permutation combination of which create this phenomenal and noumenal world. Mata paratanya kinjadashti sutur managana. Krishna says, there is no truth, there is no controller higher than me. Compared to me, even big demigods like Brahma, Shiva, Ganesh, Indra, Kuvera, Varuna, 
are insignificant. They are like little insignificant insects compared to the power of the Supreme Personality, Godhead. One time Lord Brahma tested Krishna when Krishna was exhibiting his pastimes on the planet. Lord Brahma wanted to test Krishna. He challenged him by whisking away all of his associates, the cows and cowherd boys, during one afternoon while they were having lunch. Krishna volunteered to go off and retrieve some cows which had wandered and he left his mates there finishing their lunch with other cows surrounding them and <coughs> while Krishna's away Brahma took the opportunity to cause them all to disappear he put them into a cave and made them go to sleep however when Brahma looked back to the site of the crime you might say there was a whole another set of cows and cowherd boys so Brahma was he had he had wanted to impress or challenge Krishna with the extent of his mystic powers. But now Brahma himself was perplexed. He didn't know what was going on. Experienced a mode of, moment of vertigo there. And remember, Brahma's no slouch. He created the universe. But the point to remember is that the power by which Brahma created the universe was given by Krishna. Haranyakashipu baffled as to why he was unable to kill his five-year-old son. He said, where do you get your power from? And Prahlad answered, Prahlad said, Death, don't you know? I get my power from Vishnu. You also get your power from Vishnu. The demigods get their power from Vishnu. Brahma gets his power from Vishnu, your boon. That you may not be killed by day or night, land or sea, inside the house or outside of this house, by man or beast, by what comes from Brahma. But Brahma's ability to give you that boom comes from Krishna. So there's a warning there. There's a subtle warning which Prahlad Maharaj is imparting to his father. And the warning is, you don't mess with the devotees of Vishnu. You don't, whatever power you've attained it comes ultimately from Vishnu. So if you get too puffed up with that power, too arrogant, then uh, it will be Vishnu himself who will cut you down to size, and reduce you to humility. There's a story that Prabhupada used to say, Puna Mushika Bhava. Puna means again, Mushika means mouse, and Bhava means become. Again become a mouse. So was a sage, full of mystic powers, deep in meditation one day, and he felt a little tugging. His loincloth looked down and saw a mouse. So he wanted nothing more than to go back and continue his meditation on the super soul within the heart. And so he said to the mouse, what do you want? And the mouse said, cats, cats are bothering me. So just in order to get rid of the mouse and go back to his meditation, he said, okay, become a cat. A week or so later, he's again deep in meditation on the super soul. And feels an, another tugging. And here's the mouse, which has become a cat, tugging again. Says, now what do you want? This is the second time you've disturbed my meditation. And he says, the, in the, in the cat says, dogs, dogs are bothering me. So become a dog. Just go away. So a few, a couple of weeks later, again, he feels a tugging. Looks down. Now the dog says, Tigers. Tigers are harassing me. Tigers want to eat me. The sage said, All right, for once and all, become a tiger. Now, leave me alone. But rather than leaving him alone, once the dog was transformed into the body of a tiger, he lingered in the area and his whiskers were twitching, his lips were curling, his yellow eyes were fixed. On the sage, he's licking his lips with his tongue. Sage looked at the lion, tiger, and he said, So, you want to eat me? And the tiger said, Yes. Then the sage said, Purnar Mushika Baba, again become a mouse. So it so happens that we get our power from the Lord get favors and blessings from the Lord, we increase our influence, we increase our prosperity, 
And all this increase in opulence, we start to attribute to something we did or something that we deserve. And we start to then mistreat others condescendingly, arrogantly. We think that we're less, that they are less than we are. And eventually we get so puffed up and out of control with the opulences that the Lord himself gave us that Punar Mushika Baba again become a mouse. So Prahlad Maharaj said to his father, implicitly, you better not mess with those who are under the protection of Vishnu because even though you have a boon from Brahma, the great creator of the universe, Brahma's power comes from Krishna. And Brahma, after stealing the cows and the cowherd boys and challenging Krishna <clears throat> with his level of mystic power and he looked back and there was a whole other set of cows and cowherd boys and as he was pondering that what in the world Krishna revealed to Brahma that these were all four-handed Vishnu forms and at that point Brahma lost his equilibrium altogether he said my mystic power is like the mystic power of a little firefly a little glowworm Sometimes it's summer, when it gets dark, you see the little fireflies here and there. Kids like to catch them, put them in bottles, and watch them glow in the dark. So Brahma said, compared to the mystic power of Krishna, my mystic power is that of a little firefly, a little glowworm in the dark. And so he conceded and wrote these words, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satya Dada Bhigra Anadira Govinda Sarvakarana. And not only is Krishna's inside and outside the same, He's Advaitam, he's one spiritual essence. He's the full embodiment of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. He is the controller of all controllers. It is by Krishna's will that the sun rises and sets, the seasons change, and the wind blows, the tides go in and out, and death chases everyone. Mad bayat patiyatiram suris tapati varsantindu mitis chariti bayat. Not only is he all of these things, but he also existed. Eko Narayanashit, before there was a moon, before there was a sun, before there was stars, before there was Indra, before there was Varuna, before there was Chandra, there was Krishna. Existing completely, self sufficiently, eternally in the spiritual world. Spiritual world is always there. Material world comes and goes. Mutpa. Bhutva Praliate. Therefore it is said, Name be du Sharagana Prabhavana Mahamadira Marishana. There is no one, not the sages, not the demigods, not the ascetics, not the yogis, who can know Krishna by their own powers. Krishna preceded Gobinam Adipurusham, he's the original person, the prime evil Lord. His existence cannot even be it cannot even be traced. So we have no experience of Krishna because he is the seed from which the universe comes. And the example is given. Once the seed sprouts and becomes a plant, leaves, branches, fruits, and vegetables, then the original seed cannot be detected. So in this way, Krishna is unknown even to the great sages and demigods. I gave the example at the end of the class yesterday also that a cloth, first of all, you have cotton, then cotton becomes threads. They make twine, threads out of cotton. So the original cotton can no longer be seen then once it's transformed into threads. Now the threads are woven into, say, a quilt. Now once the quilt is there, the threads, which go horizontally and vertically, the quilt is nothing more than threads. It's all it is. But the threads cannot, are not visible cannot actually detect the threads. Um, and yet the threads are everything. They're horizontal, they're vertical. Okay. One devotee said, my life is but a weaving between my Lord and me. I cannot choose the colors, but he worketh steadily. <clears throat> he often weeps sorrow and I am foolish pride. Forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom falls silent and the shuttle ceases to fly. Will Krishna unroll the canvas and reveal the reasons why? The dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skillful hand as are the threads of gold and silver and the pattern 
that he has planned. There's nothing that happens as on the macrocosm or the microcosm that is not happening by the will of the Lord. And no one can contravene or contradict the will of the Lord. Everybody, even the powerful local Pauls, the heads of all the planets, even the sun, even the powerful sun, just uh, last month or so, after the long Utah winter, when we've been deprived of sun and life-giving vitamin D. So, revitalizing to get out on an April day feel the warmth of the sun on your face take your shirt off absorb the, the sun gives so much benefit it exists only for others the sun never takes since millions and millions of years it's been giving 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 unrestrictedly we get health we get vitality we get long life from the sun itself the sun gives open-handedly and never takes anything. But by whose order is the sun so generous? The open-handedness of the sun is simply the reflection of God's generosity, kindness, and open-handedness. He orders the sun to do his will. And his will is that we all may be sustained, we all may be nourished, we all may be supported. Even though we don't particularly care to follow the Lord, we don't particularly care to reestablish our relationship for him. We don't have service of the Lord, loving devotional service, as the number one item on our to-do list. In fact, we pushed it far down. Still, the Lord is so kind and so generous that he orders the Son, provide for them nevertheless. Provide for them in spite of their indifference, their remoteness, their independent spirit. The Son goes about doing exactly what Krishna has asked him to do. Similarly, the wind, the waters, the earth, the fruits, the flowers. Probably if they had their own independence, they would say, they don't deserve it. I'm cutting them off. <laughs> I'm disowning them. But because they're under the influence of the Supreme Personality of God, and there is no one more kind no one more generous. He's completely self-sufficient. He's not detracted from when we fail to serve him, nor is he augmented when we agree to serve him. He's always Atmaramas. He's always self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything. He's just happy, blissful, he's an ocean of pleasure. He's always smiling. He's never overcome by darkness or doubts or defeatism or negativity. Those things cannot even approach within a thousand miles of him. Uh, so he has no need to um, um, cater after our votes, to cater after our worship or our praise. Being completely self-satisfied and self-sufficient, it doesn't cost him anything to extend his kindness, to extend his support through the material creation, the controllers of which are big demigods like Brahma, Shiva, Indra, Bhumi, and so on and so forth. And he extends his generosity to us, though we, if the truth be known, do not deserve it. So if it were up to them, probably the controllers of grains, and rains, and foodstuff, and flowers, and seasonal change, sunrise and sunset, it would probably be all withdrawn from us, but because but we're lucky, we should thank our stars. None of the demigods are the supreme controller, but none other than Krishna is the controller. Sarva Yonishu Kantya Murtya Sama Pradabhita. He claims Krishna. Krishna alone. Supreme person that claims us as his children. This is the seed giving Father, and He accepts the responsibility of maintaining us, whether we accept Him, whether we glorify Him, 
whether we honor him or not. Because that relationship of father to children can never change. It's an eternal fact. I was born in a family in Pennsylvania called Warden. Sometimes as a child growing up, I did things that were pleasing to my parents. Sometimes as a child growing up and as a teenager, I did things that were displeasing to my parents. But I was always a warden. I was always welcome at the Thanksgiving table. I was always welcome at the Christmas table. I was always welcome at the family reunions. The door was always open to me. Whether I acted obediently or disobediently, I was always a member of the family. And so similarly, you are eternally, and, and it is your great fortune that there's nothing you can do about being a member of Krishna's family. You always have a place at the table. Krishna always loves you. He'll never stop trying to do good to you. That may not be true of the demigods. So thank your lucky stars that Krishna is the ultimate authority. Krishna is the ultimate Suridam Sarva. He's the creator. He's the owner. Be peaceful. Be calm. Be content that he who created everything, he was the controller of all the demigods, he was the creator and owner of all land and of all properties, and he was the meant to be the recipient of all sacrifices, is in addition to all of that, Sudhidam Sarabhutra, he is your friend. And he is ordering the controllers of the universes to support us in spite of our fallen condition. It was Vritta Sura, I believe, who said to Indra, and Indra is one of those demigods who cannot but follow the orders of the Lord, whether he likes it or not. He says, all of us, you are bound by the stringent laws of material nature. We're bound hand and foot to act according to to our own natures. Arjuna wanted to put aside his nature as a warrior, leave the battlefield, abdicate his duty as a protector and guardian of righteousness, and go to the forest, chant mantras, be a Brahmin, live a life of nonviolence. Krishna says, prakritam. He says, I have created each and every person with a prakriti, with a nature. And prakriti also means that he is the Lord, and prakriti means we are subordinate. It, is, it behooves us to act in unison with the talents and abilities that the Lord created in us. And so Krishna tells Arjuna, you will not be happy trying to pursue another's path. Shreyam shraduguna parodama shan. Better you in, uh, engage, better you be destroyed on the battlefield, fighting according to your talents and abilities, than that you live a long life artificially as a brother. Everyone has to follow what the Lord wants them to do. That will create peace and harmony. Examples given, the bulls are big and strong and they have an immense capacity for creating chaos. 1,200 pounds of muscle. So if they're left to their own devices, they'll create mayhem wherever they go. But they happen to have very tender nostrils and so when you put a ring through the nostrils and you attach a rope to that ring even a small child can lead the bull here and there and that energy that power that strength which otherwise would create havoc is controlled and it's used for good it's directed in order to do good also Vritasura said uh, loka sapari yashame Locus up the heads of all the planets, all the demigods, all the big powerful. Dvija Vijaya Devara said they act like birds caught in the net. They have not got their independence. They are dependent in the way they're created and by the nature and temperaments that they were endowed with by Krishna. They are obliged to act according to the instructions of Krishna. And that's true for all living beings. You may have a vast orchestra with percussions and strings and wind instruments and oboes and cellos and violins and drums and cymbals. They all are created and designed 
and orchestrated to produce a beautiful, pleasing, uplifting, harmonic sound. So God created every living being specifically to complement all other living beings. And when we step into the middle of what God created us to be and we act in consonance with our true nature as Arjuna ended up doing, it creates an incredible harmony, incredible symphony which resonates here and there throughout the universe. Therefore it is said, when Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy, what is the best thing? The first answer, not the ultimate answer, but the first answer which Ramananda Roy gave, which is generally true for all living beings, from the demigods down to the sudras and even the untouchables, the answer which Ramananda Roy gave to Sri Tanamaru Varnashram Chadabara Purushena Parapara Vishnu Rajadevana Nyanya Tatasha. The whole purpose of life, Vishnu Arajate Pantam, to act in such a way that Lord Vishnu is pleased. All institutions, all organizations, all companies are meant for the satisfaction of Vishnu. Evam Prabhartitam Chakram Nanavati Agarim and Mogam Partam Sadhyapati. It's like when the stomach is satisfied, when the arms and the hands and the eyes and the ears and the legs all act in such a way as to satisfy the stomach, then all the different parts of the body are nourished. Otherwise, if the hands act independently, if the eyes act independently, if the ears act independently, if the eggs, legs act independently, the body will weaken, shrivel up, and die. All different limbs, all different living entities, as diverse and variegated as they may be, each and one, every one is endowed by the Lord with specific talents and abilities that will give them a seat in the orchestra. And if we recognize that and we act true to that, then the result will be santum, santum yat gapaprijati, knowing that there is none other than the Lord that there is no other controller than the Lord, that everyone is meant to act according to the will of the Lord, that will bring peace and prosperity. All of human society is meant to worship Lord Vishnu. Unfortunately, we're far from that ideal, especially now in Kali Yuga. We hardly know, amongst thousands and thousands of people, you'll hardly find one who knows what is the ultimate goal, the purpose, the perfection of human life? In fact, just the opposite is what we're seeing today. Instead of worshiping Vishnu, moving collectively and individually towards a perfected state of life, we are being educated in the primary, secondary, collegiate, university, graduate, postgraduate levels. We are being educated, so to speak, to worship math. According to the current direction of modern society, men are so illusioned. They think they can be happy by manipulating matter to build skyscrapers, big roads, automobiles, and so on. We become so filled with hubris, pride, and arrogance, so far removed from any sense of God-centeredness that there are all kinds of so-called explanations and theories out there about how the universe was created from a chunk, how there was a big bang, and there was explosion, and everything proceeded from that. And yet, our experiences from observation and experiment, matter is dull, dead, inert. It's not for nothing that is called bahirantas, the external energy of the Lord. Matter at no point becomes conscious of itself. Matter at no point begins to organize itself from a lower level of organization to a higher level of organization. And the idea that as a result of an explosion you could get order, organization, um, is just absolutely against all observation and all common sense. And yet in this topsy-turvy age of Kali Yuga, it is the general opinion. It's a generally accepted opinion. One of the symptoms of Kali Yuga is said that if you go up and tell all kinds of lies and make things up and cater and flatter to the debased tastes of mankind in general, the lowest common denominator, they'll vote for you, they'll glorify you, 
they'll make a hero out of you. But if you stand up and tell the truth, people will come to beat you with sticks. But nevertheless, in spite of all the anomalies, in spite of all the things that are missing, all the things that are twisted, perverted, and misdirected, in spite of the top being the bottom being the top and the top being the bottom, in this current age of Kali Yuga, which is like an ocean of faults, there is nevertheless there is one great benefit in this current dark materialistic age of Kali, and that is that by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare, you can get immunity. You and anyone else who chants with you, individually and collectively, you can get protection from all the fallout of this godless age of Kali. It may be raining, cats and dogs outside, but if you have a good raincoat and a good umbrella, you're going to stay warm and dry. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter all the things that are wrong, the things that are missing in this current age. It doesn't matter all the faults that exist. If you says that the chanting of Hare Krishna is powerful enough and sufficient enough at least for the individual who practices it and for his loved ones to make all the necessary adjustments. So you can still live relatively peaceful, relatively comfortably in this age of Kali and by executing Krishna consciousness in this life you can still have every expectation of going back to home back to God in, in the next life, following the footsteps of great devotees like Narada Muni, who started, he ended up being a transcendental spaceman who can travel at will throughout the material and spiritual world, but he started out, just like you and me, started out without any resources, without any connections, <clears throat> without any money, without any particular assets, but he had one great gift, and that was the chanting of the Holy Names of the Lord. Naprema Shravanadi Bhakti Rabha Vyoga Taisho Gyana Vishubhaga Vikarami Aho Yajyotira Vahinardi Kasari Kajarami. I think it was Madhvacharya, or no, it was Yamunacharya said, Naprema Shravanadi, I have no love for you, Krishna. I have no attraction for hearing about you. I have no intelligence. I have no credit of pious activities. I have no austerities behind me. I have absolutely no qualifications to merit your shelter, your protection, your instructions, your light in my life. But in spite of my being bereft of any qualifications, I still, I still am bothered by this great hope that not because of who I am, but because of who you are, you will give me the shelter of your lotus feet. You'll give me your protection, and if I keep in faith, keep doing the right thing even when bad things are happening, keep chanting the holy names of the Lord without uh, inconsistency or without selfish motivation, then I have every hope against hope that because you are the most merciful, the Mo Maha Bananaya, that at the end of this life, you will take me back to home, back to God. And that hope will not leave me. It stays with me day and night. So let us also chant, pass the tests, persevere, and hope that by the unlimited mercy of the Lord, Karuna Sindhu, we may achieve success in this life and go back to home, back to God in the next. We'll end there. This is our second session after the long gap. So I feel like we're kind of getting back into the swing of things. We've had people join us this morning. Brent, Hare Krishna, Natasha, good morning. Jay, good morning. We saw Jay in Las Vegas. He and his wife were vacationing there and they swung by and spent the whole day at the Color Fest. We didn't get a lot of chance to talk, but whenever I intersected with him coming and going. He always had a big smile on his face. Bhakti Gary, glad that you discovered we're back live again. Anjali, 
Hari Hari Bo Anjali. Anjali was at the Vegas festival on stage, adding to the angelic sounds of all the various bands. Dandavat Pranams. Paibhavi's comment is, again, we become mice should we disregard the fact that all power comes from the Lord. So what do you, what do you think? What are your thoughts, uh, Rob, at the end of today's session? Uh, thank you, Prabhuji, so much for the for this class. Um, for me, it's uh, my takeaway is, is I need to remember on a daily basis to turn my will and my life over to Krishna so that I can be used in his plan, so that I can be used in the way that I'm supposed to be used and not to not fight against what it is that he wants me to do. Yeah, we all want power. We all want extraordinary favor. We all want to make a difference. We all want to live a meaningful, purposeful life. And the way to do that is to put ourselves right in the middle of what Krishna created us to do. We're not that significant, but if Krishna wants to use us as an instrument, then there's no limit to what we can do. Arjuna agreed to be the instrument of the Lord, and he's, his accomplishments were so prodigious that we talk about him and we glorify him 5,000 years later. But had Arjuna opted not to follow the orders of the Lord, we'd be talking about somebody else because the Lord would have done what he intended to do. The only issue really is, are you going to agree to go along with it? Or are you going to step outside of the protection and favor of the Lord? That's the question. So thank you. We'll be back tomorrow. It's so good to be back doing these programs and be back with you. I'll look forward to our getting together again 23 hours from now. In the meantime, keep chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare, Hare.